I have the great pleasure to uh, welcome on stage uh, Lukas Levak. He's the director of the Department of Research and Development at the Ministry of Education. Uh, please, have a seat. Thank you very much. Does it work? Yeah, yeah it, it works. works. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, so, can you, to, to get things started, can you give us an overview of, of the Czech research landscape and, and you know, especially what are the, its strengths, but also what, what do you think are the challenges ahead? ahead? Uh, th thank you very much, Florian. And uh, first of all, before uh, I start answering the question, uh, let me excuse uh, uh, Minister of Education, News and Sports, Vladimir Balaš. Believe it or not, but uh, the Czech presidency is keeping us uh, really busy also in the final stage. <laughs> uh, and uh, these days we are having uh, so many conflicts, uh, schedule conflicts, uh, that it's really unbelievable. Uh, so I had to step in. And of course, uh, thank you very much for inviting us to take part in this event. So uh, talking about the strengths and weaknesses or challenges um, uh, that uh, the Czech research and innovation uh, ecosystem is facing right now. Let's start with the, with the strengths uh, and let's uh, target the challenges a bit later. So uh, talking about the strengths, uh, well, um, I believe well, I will pick two, two uh, most important issues that I consider as the strengths of the Czech research and innovation ecosystem right now. Uh, the first one is that uh, we managed uh, the policy shift uh, uh, in terms of assessing the research organization. Everyone uh, in the audience is definitely well, very well aware uh, about this research uh, assessment reform which is uh, going on. The initiative is going through Europe and uh, the, the basic idea is to uh, shift from uh, the assessment uh, focusing uh, strictly on bibliometry uh, to uh, a complete uh, and complex assessment of research organizations as uh, entire universum. Uh, so uh, uh, it's uh, very good that in Czech Republic uh, we already uh, have had managed this challenge, uh, introduced a, a new methodology to uh, evaluate the performance of uh, research organizations, but uh, we are not only assessing the performance, uh, but also the, the institutional environment of the organization. So we clearly moved from uh, this bibliocentric research assessment uh, mechanism to a complex one. Uh, and uh, not only we are assessing uh, the uh, research organizations according to this, two, uh, this, uh, this new methodology, but uh, we have been assessing also the research infrastructures according uh, the top level standards of S3. Uh, since 2014. So uh, we believe that, uh, that uh, this is the right shift within Czech national landscape and it will bring us the fruits. Uh, well, it's already bringing, but it will uh, of course take some time. So this is uh, definitely one of the strengths. Uh, and uh, the, the, the second one, uh, well, uh, since I'm coming from uh, a department uh, which uh, uh, focuses on the European research era policy making and public funding and uh, on the top of that also research infrastructures in particular. Uh, I would say that the Czech Republic might be considered a success stories uh, when it comes to investing in, in research infrastructures. And when I'm talking about research infrastructures, uh, I mean uh, open access based facilities uh, which are operated according to uh, the standards by uh, the European Strategy Forum on our eyes. Uh, so uh, if we take a look on the S3 roadmap right now, uh, the latest update from 2021 includes, uh, uh, if I'm uh, correct, uh, 63 uh, uh, research infrastructures of uh, European uh, importance. And uh, in, in uh, more than half of them, Czechia is engaged, uh, S3 mm -hmm. landmarks and projects uh, included. Uh, and, uh, and at the same time, we have already participated in uh, uh, 16 European Research Infrastructure Consortia, which is very important because through these initiatives, you internationalize uh, the Czech uh, national research infrastructure landscape mm -hmm. and integrate it in the European research area. Uh, there will be more ERI consortia coming in in the, in the upcoming months with Czechia as a funding member. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, to name uh, just a few really good practice examples that I'm uh, pretty sure uh, everyone knows. Uh, it's the Extreme Light Infrastructure. Good morning, Andrew Harrison, the new science director of uh, Eli Eric. 
uh, and um, um, and uh, of course uh, these are those large scale facilities but uh, when we move to uh, other uh, other scientific domains uh, we can uh, spot uh, uh, quite a number of really top notch facilities in the Czech Republic so uh, I would say that uh, owing to uh, heavy investments uh, by uh, the cohesion policy instruments in the previous years, uh, the Czech Republic was really able and really managed to upgrade the research, uh, research landscape really mm -hmm. significantly. So these are the strengths. Of course, uh, there are weaknesses. Uh, maybe we may call them uh, challenges, opportunities uh, for the future. Uh, anyway, um, uh, if there weren't any weaknesses, we wouldn't be sitting right <laughs> here, uh, uh, here right now. Uh, the, the, the first one might be, uh, might be uh, the, uh, the, the intensity of uh, research and innovation funding in Czechia. Uh, although uh, in 2021 we reached a level of 1% GDP, uh, public and private spending included, uh, we are still lacking behind. Uh, uh, our partners in the European research area. There are countries that uh, have already set the target uh, way above three percent. So we are not even attacking uh, the level of three percent. So uh, this is definitely something we should focus in the years to come. And and what's um, the level at the moment? Uh, the level amount uh, in 2021, according to the statistic, it's uh, two point. Uh, it's exactly two point. So okay. uh, two 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 percent two percent. So. Uh, we are still uh, 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 quite a huge space, a huge gap to fill uh, in the years to come. So it, it, it's going to be a big challenge uh, until 2030. Uh, and um, uh, uh, another very serious issue uh, is uh, uh, still a uh, uh, very uh, low level of participation in, uh, in uh, the framework programs, mm -hmm. be it Horizon 2020 or Horizon Europe. It's quite uh, interesting and there uh, have been a number of studies explaining uh, what might be the rationale behind such a low uh, level of, of participation. One of them uh, might be, uh, and it's a paradox, uh, the, 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 the level of um, uh, investment funds coming in uh, the uh, research and innovation ecosystem through uh, the co cohesion policy instruments. Uh, so, uh, either way, uh, we really have to focus how to strengthen our participation in, uh, in um, uh, Horizon Europe, not only because we can get more money, we can squeeze more money uh, out of the program, but uh, it's about uh, networking, uh, cooperating with the best. And uh, right. we need to uh, learn how to cooperate with the best. Uh, and uh, the, the, uh, there shouldn't only be uh, good practice examples, it should be uh, like a uh, uh, basic setting of the environment. Right. Well, speaking of the best, um, how, what's, what's the government strategy for attracting top talent in research and innovation? And uh, by the way, is brain drain still an issue? Well, uh, this is not a simple question <laughs> to answer. Uh, uh, and uh, there's definitely no single measure you may implement at uh, any national level uh, to retain talent and attract uh, uh, best researchers, best uh, innovators uh, from within Europe, but also third countries uh, to a country. It always has to be a, a well-balanced set of measures, uh, a well-balanced uh, policy mix, uh, and uh, so uh, if I was, uh, uh, you know, a uh, top class researcher, uh, which I'm not, <laughs> uh, so uh, if, I, if I consider Czech Republic as a country uh, to perform my research activities in, uh, I would definitely take into consideration the quality level of the research uh, institutions mm -hmm. uh, and uh, not only the quality level of the research infrastructure, uh, the facilities uh, that uh, may help me to perform really top class experiments, but I would also assess uh, very carefully what is the environment, the institutional environment of those organizations, uh, and uh, if the organizations are able to provide international competitive uh, career opportunities. So mm -hmm. uh, it's not only uh, about heavy investments, uh, but also uh, about uh, fine-tuning uh, the environment at the level, at the institutional level of research organizations so that these um, uh, institutions are attractive for uh, researchers uh, from abroad. Uh, and uh, so, so uh, having said that, it's quite clear it's, it's a complex of measures. 
uh, one of the important measures that we uh, implemented during the past programming period, and uh, we will focus on that also during this programming period, uh, is uh, to uh, invest in the development of uh, institutional environment so that the institutions uh, 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 have uh, clear strategies uh, support structures for uh, researchers and uh, that they can really be comparable in terms of the institutional mm -hmm. environment with uh, the institutions uh, uh, in Germany, France, UK, yeah. you name it. Um, you, you mentioned before in your introduction that uh, you're not very happy with, with the level of participation in Horizon Europe. Um, can you tell us what, where's the level at the moment and where would you like it to be? Um, and um, I, I guess fr from there on, um, the, the question is whether uh, these, these programs, in the, the, the widening program helps in, in any way to, to get that number up. Yeah, well, uh, the level is uh, surprisingly low, believe me. Uh, of course, uh, it depends on uh, particular uh, funding instruments of the framework program, uh, but the overall intensity is definitely way uh, below the average. So if we are at least uh, uh, at the average, it would be a, a really big success, uh, and uh, we have still a long way to go. Uh, widening measures, uh, um, uh, of course, they are beneficial. Uh, that's why uh, the cohesion countries uh, support uh, these measures um, in uh, the architecture of the framework program uh, and uh, they definitely help. But uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, they cannot uh, bring um, uh, the um, uh, difference uh, on their own because it's uh, just a set, set of widening measures. Uh, and, and as I said before, uh, you may raise the money from Horizon Europe, but uh, to be really successful, competitive, and, uh, and, and, uh, and performing uh, well, uh, you have to uh, perform uh, policy reforms at the national level. You have to uh, increase uh, the funding intensity, and uh, you mm -hmm. have to introduce the international standards into your environment. Uh, widening measures are, are great. They uh, may bring uh, or introduce good practice examples through the projects, be it uh, teaming, uh, twinning, uh, era chairs, but uh, standing alone, they uh, will never be su successful as a whole. Uh, uh, in mid-October, uh, the uh, EU Council uh, adopted uh, uh, the Council conclusions on widening, reflecting yeah. the uh, outcomes of the special report by the European Court of Auditors. And uh, one of the outcomes of this special report is uh, exactly what I'm telling you. Uh, the measures are beneficial, but to uh, uh, introduce a real change, real shift in the performance, you have to uh, mm -hmm. introduce uh, a, a wide set of policy, policy uh, policy making measures at the national level uh, and uh, that's the key to be successful okay we um, we had a little conversation last night about um, the future of, of, of these widening uh, funding schemes and uh, the question was raised um, about you know if, if the goal of the widening program should be that the com countries improve their performance so well that the widening program is no longer required. Um, so, um, w is that a goal for Czechia as well? Well, it would be uh, it would be nice. Uh, it would be really nice and appreciate it if we <laughs> if we reach uh, reach uh, such level of performance that we uh, wouldn't need uh, widening measures uh, any longer. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, I must say that it's going to take a while. Yeah. Uh, and uh, frankly speaking, I, I cannot imagine uh, the next framework program without m widening measures because uh, uh, the uh, research gap and innovation divide within the European research era is uh, really significant. If you count uh, the, uh, the funding altogether, which uh, EU 13 countries get from uh, the framework program, it's mm -hmm. Uh, it's a, a, a such uh, uh, it's a such uh, shocking number, really shocking number, yeah. uh, that uh, I'm afraid that uh, we will still need to keep these widening measures within the framework program, uh, 
Uh, and as I said, of course, uh, the national countries of the less performing uh, regions or macro regions really have to focus to implement uh, the national reforms uh, because uh, uh, mm -hmm. widening is not a universal uh, uh, answer to the question of uh, the research gap and innovation divide. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, you, you mentioned, you also mentioned in the beginning uh, when you listed the um, successes of Czechia, uh, you mentioned research infrastructures. Um, now the, 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 at least the biggest ones were built with, uh, with cohesion money from, from the EU. Um, now, how, how do you see the, the future of cohesion funding uh, for research innovation going forward? Well, uh, I think I will start uh, w with, uh, w with by saying that uh, Czechia is definitely among the countries uh, which may be labeled a success story when it comes to uh, investment, uh, investments in, in, in research and innovation uh, 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 ecosystems through cohesion policy instruments. Uh, and I already named uh, a, a few, uh, few examples, but th there are much more. On the other hand, uh, 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 and there are always two sides of, of the coin, uh, the Czech uh, R&D ecosystem is really dependent on uh, the structural funds in terms of investments. Mm -hmm. And uh, sooner or later, uh, we will stop being a cohesion country. Uh, so uh, the Czech uh, national landscape, and I mean uh, research and innovation policymakers, really have to uh, adopt to this scenario and, uh, and prepare for uh, the years uh, where there will be not such a huge inflow of cohesion funds and the heavy investments, and I mean investments at the level of, of uh, really billions of, of, of euros, will have to be covered uh, through uh, the state budget expenditure. So this is uh, truly uh, one of the challenges. Right now we are at the beginning of the current programming period, the, the first wave of uh, calls. Uh, from uh, the new operational program Johannes Ames uh, Comenius uh, is being mm -hmm. launched. So uh, uh, one might say, well, we have still a lot of time uh, to think about the future, but uh, the, it, it's, uh, it's not true. And uh, well, uh, of course, right now, uh, all the European countries are, are uh, coping with the, the post-pandemic recovery, energy crisis, and uh, subsequent economic crisis. Uh, but uh, when the situation settles down a bit, we really have to start seriously considering how to fill in uh, this uh, foreseen gap uh, when uh, the Czech Republic or, or large parts of the Czech Republic will not be cohesion uh, regions uh, any mm -hmm. longer. Do you have an estimate of how big that gap will be? Well, uh, you know, considering the uh, level of uh, investment uh, in, in, in uh, the research ecosystem, which uh, will go through uh, the operational program uh, Johannes Amos Comenius, which is uh, devoted to uh, investments in the public research sector, mainly mm -hmm. in the public research sector. Uh, the level of investment during this programming period is more or less, uh, well, it's, it's quite similar to uh, to uh, the budget envelope uh, of, uh, of the previous programming period. So uh, talking about numbers, we are talking about uh, something between 70, 80 uh, a billion Czech crowns, uh, which uh, may equal like three, 3 billion euros. Okay. Um, and you said you already, the government is already thinking about that. Um, what's, where do you think you will find that, um, that money, that replacement money? Well, or where, where do you hope it will come from? Well, uh, partly, uh, partly some of the money uh, definitely has to, has to be squeezed uh, from uh, the uh, framework programs because, as I said, the, uh, the participation is shockingly low uh, and we have to improve uh, our performance uh, uh, very much. Uh, of course, uh, uh, there are already some investment instruments uh, uh, at the national level, if mm -hmm. I don't count the cohesion policy instruments. So there are already some instruments at place, but in terms of the volume of, of public funding, they are not comparable uh, to, to the operational program. But it's natural. If you uh, have 
uh, the structural funds at your disposal, you should be spending them at the most uh, efficient way. Uh, but sooner or later, and uh, it's going to be within, uh, within uh, uh, one decade at the most, at the okay. latest. Uh, so the time frame is very short. Yeah, the time frame uh, is very short, and uh, it goes also hand in hand with, with uh, uh, the overall level uh, of um, uh, of uh, uh, R and D intensity, uh, uh, the fu the funding mm -hmm. intensity in Czechia, which is still at the level of two percent. There are European countries uh, which are uh, which are reaching the level of three percent, or countries mm -hmm. which are already above three percent. Of course, there's not much of them, uh, but still, uh, uh, this has to be somehow handled uh, in the years to come. Okay, thank you very much, Lukas. Uh, for this very interesting conversation. 